Thank you. Uh, so you're going to share the, the slides, right? Yes. OK, perfect. Thank you. So I think it's a good morning for you. It's still. If you want, to, if you want us to move forward, just say next and we'll we'll move the slides for you. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you. Well, so I think it's a good morning for you. It's still uh, evening here in the other side of the world. I'm in the Netherlands right now, so it's a quarter, actually 20 past midnight now. So <laughs> maybe my brain is a bit slow, but anyway, I will try to give my best in this presentation. So thank you very much for uh, having me here. So uh, next, please. Well, so, uh, okay, maybe come back one, yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, so basically this presentation is to introduce the fit count protocol. Uh, it was originally developed in the United Kingdom, but in the last year, uh, we joined some uh, with other researchers in Brazil to adapt the protocol and release the first version of a mobile app for monitoring uh, flower visitors uh, also in Brazil and in other countries in South America, uh, but also in Europe. And uh, basically the, the, the app, the protocol is just uh, expanding for other countries right now. Uh, well, so uh, we are all aware of the, the need of uh, continuously monitoring pollinators for the maintenance of many ecosystem services. But we also know that this can be very costly and take a lot of time. So citizen science is uh, seen as an alternative to uh, collect data uh, for, for monitoring pollinators in many initiatives. And then fit count started many years ago, uh, actually in 2017, as a paper-based uh, form that people uh, used to, to apply going to the fields and uh, counting the number of flower visitors. Uh, but now, yeah, we have this mobile version uh, to make uh, the application of a uh, feed count of the protocol faster. Uh, and uh, the idea of the, the protocol is basically to monitor flower visitation, which is different of pollination. So we know that uh, visitation is different of pollination because not always pollination will happen when some animal visit a flower. So we cannot say for sure that the, that kind of thing that the citizen scientists are seeing on the field is uh, truly pollination. So that's why we adopt this terminology of uh, flower visits instead of flower uh, pollination or something like that. So uh, we have a, a huge group of pollinators that we uh, have interested interest on monitoring, uh, both in, in Europe, but also in South America. So it was a bit challenging to make this uh, adaptations uh, in the protocol and in, in the app to, to cover up all these this groups of interest. So uh, next, please. Well, uh, it's a very simple protocol. So basically we have to set a 50 square centimeters area around uh, target plant species. So basically we have a list uh, of plants in, in the app uh, that the citizen scientists, citizen scientists can choose from. Uh, but it can, can also select completely different plants from the, from the options we, we give in this list. And then they just have uh, to type basically the name of, of the plant. It could be the scientific name or uh, also the, the popular name, the vernacular name for, for that plant species. And then they have to count the number of flowers uh, in that plant. And for 10 minutes, they have to count all the flower visitors that they can uh, spot in the area. Uh, so uh, next, please. Uh, here's just basically the, the groups of, uh, of flower visitors that we are monitoring. So here we see that uh, these groups in uh, the United Kingdom and Brazil are slightly different. So for instance, in Brazil, we have uh, bats and hummingbirds as pollinators, as very important pollinators. So it makes sense to add these uh, two uh, groups here. Uh, and as we see, we have very uh, broad groups of uh, flower visitors here. And uh, we know that species uh, uh, identification, that this, this animal's identifications at species level would be the best scenario. But here we work 
uh, a, a bit different uh, in com uh, if compared to other citizen science uh, citizen science initiatives. For instance, on iNaturalist, we know that we can take a picture of the organism and we have a computer vision model that can uh, that can identify the species uh, or, or make at least a very a good recommendations for taxonomic identification. But in this case, what we have uh, are basically the citizen scientists uh, look into the animals that are visiting this plant uh, during this uh, 10 minutes and uh, basically telling what they are seeing. So we could not uh, go uh, really deep in the uh, taxonomic identification because we know that uh, uh, most people would not uh, would not have the that uh, knowledge of a species identification. So that's why we try to take like uh, the main features, the main traits for uh, each group. The, we also have like many uh, information cards within uh, the app to help the citizen scientists to uh, identify this uh, this big groups of flower visitors. But still, we know that uh, we could uh, improve the protocol if we could go deeper in this uh, classification that, that at least the, the taxonomic uh, identification for uh, these groups of flower visitors. Well, uh, but we also have in this version of the app in Brazil, we have two other groups. One is basically, I don't know what I have seen, or and the other one is other insects, if the citizen scientist is still able to identify that, that animal as an insect, but if uh, the citizen scientist has no idea of what he has, uh, they have seen, then they can just uh, uh, select this option of I don't know. So uh, can you please go to the next one? Well, here uh, are basically the, the first results of the application of the, the protocol in Brazil. So we uh, released the first version uh, of the app uh, last year in July. And since then, we are organizing, we've been organizing workshops around the country to, to promote the, the platform, to promote the protocol. But still, we need to put more effort on partnering, partnering up with, <laughs> sorry, other institutions to get more people involved, to uh, uh, get more uh, faith counts, to get more surveys around the country. So. Right now, uh, last year, we have just uh, 109 surveys applied in Brazil by 15 participants that recorded uh, a minimum of one and a maximum of 80 records. Uh, and this year, uh, right now, in this uh, uh, couple last weeks, we organized uh, a few bio blitz uh, around the country. So this number of surveys is probably going to uh, uh, be increased in the upcoming months, but still, uh, for the time of this, uh, that I got the data for, for this presentation, we just had like 12 surveys uh, uh, recorded by 11 participants. Can you please uh, move to the next one? Uh, yeah, next, I think it's missing the data. Oh, okay. I would just read the data from a file I have here because I think for some reason, it's not showing up there. Well, so uh, regarding the target flowers, uh, we have 27 species, plant species, that were uh, uh, monitored by the citizen scientists as the false heater in the left image, uh, count, uh, counting for 27% of all the, the records. And uh, Basil on the right side uh, picture accounting for 39% of all the, the records. Well, uh, we had a total of 874 flower visit, visits uh, in all the surveys with a minimum of zero uh, visitors and a maximum of 45 visitors for uh, per survey. Uh, next, please. Here's basically the number. Uh, the counts for uh, the basically the types of uh, the, by the groups of flower visitors. So we see that stingless bees, which are uh, native uh, to to Brazil to South America, uh, they count for the highest number of observations. And then Apsmelifera, the honeybees, 
uh, in the second place, which is uh, kind of interesting because we were expecting to uh, have uh, to, for honeybees to be the first ones in this uh, count. Uh, One minute. Okay. Uh, next, please. And for future work, well, uh, we are assessing data quality right now. We have many topics that we are uh, uh, discussing to to improve the quality the quality of data of an in feed count, but also to to promote it uh, its reuse and to share it across uh, different platforms. Uh, we we are basically talking about implementing uh, Darwin Core standard with the plant pollinator interactions vocabulary uh, to standardize this uh, data description. Uh, but still, uh, for us, it's a bit challenging as uh, we have just this uh, taxonomic identification for very broad groups. So we are still discussing uh, how to do this. But yeah, it's in uh, something that we have to work in this uh, up upcoming months. So I think that's it next. And yeah. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. If you have any questions. Great, thank you so much. Are there any questions that we have? Hi, Siobhan Leachman, uh, Wikimedia Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, I'm interested in your comment about iNaturalist. Is there any way or have you considered broadening the impact of this protocol by doing outreach to iNaturalist users? So, sorry, I think I had a problem with my audio. Could you please, please repeat it, your question? No problem. Um, have you thought about um, outreach to iNaturalist users about this protocol? Mm, I haven't, but, well, I think, do you think, well, we're still thinking about how to integrate things, but as we don't have pictures of the, the flower visitors, just the plants, I think it makes it a bit challenging to integrate with a naturalist, you know, because uh, for a naturalist, we need the, the pictures of the, uh, of the flower visitors, but in this case, we don't record we don't request the citizen scientists to, uh, you know, take pictures of the insects, of the flower visitors. Sorry. So, yeah. I, I'm just, I guess I'm just thinking about it of me reading this pro as a, someone who would do this type of work, me reading the protocol and mm -hmm. I would use iNaturalist to do the protocol. So I would sit there, measure out the piece of um, area. I'd actually take a photo of the plants while, before I did the 10 minute and then I would, run around taking as many photographs as I could of the actual um, insects landing on the flowers and then upload it all to iNaturalist yeah, and get hopefully... Yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, and, and that, that's how I would do it. As an, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily use a separate app for it. This is just me because I'm an natural, iNaturalist absolute fanatic. Yeah. Um, but that's because... But I'd use the same protocol, you know, if you said measure out a certain measure of land. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm also a big fan of iNaturalist. I'm also using it for many other projects in Brazil. Uh, yeah, I think it would be a very interesting approach. But uh, I think the thing behind a uh, fit count is sometimes you have like huge groups of pollinators come to, to the plant. And not always you will be able to make like good pictures of this flower visitors. So for instance, once I was applying this protocol in a very sunny day in Brazil, and it was really challenging for me to count like all the visitors. So I know that I could never take uh, pictures of all these visitors, but I agree that I could maybe take some pictures of them uh, meanwhile, and it would be uh, much more interesting because then you have pictures, you can improve the, uh, the quality of the taxonomic identification. So yeah, after uh, things you said, uh, I'm thinking here that maybe we could just combine the, the applications. We could have people 
using both uh, apps, a naturalist and fake account, and trying to 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 connect this data somehow. Great, thank you guys so much. Okay, we're going to move on to our next speaker. Thank I'm you. Let IT get set up.